Time now for a look at what's been making waves online in Media Watch. And tonight we're joined by Emerald Maxwell. Uh, Emerald, you've been looking at reaction to Donald Trump's announcement that he's setting up a, a quote, patriotic education commission to promote a pro-American curriculum in the country's schools. That's right. Uh, the move is largely political, says NPR. It's a reaction to a growing push of, for schools in America to teach a history that better acknowledges slavery and institutional racism um, and announcing a new project Trump said a web of lies was being taught in US classrooms calling it a form of child abuse uh, he singled out for criticism the, the New York Times's Pulitzer Prize winning 1619 project which is an ongoing project detailing the country's history of slavery but which Trump calls toxic propaganda let's take a listen now to a bit of his speech we must clear away the twisted web of lies in our schools and classrooms and teach our children the magnificent truth about our country. We want our sons and daughters to know that they are the citizens of the most exceptional nation in the history of the world. So following these remarks, uh, the web has responded um, with phrases such as Trump youth and Hitler youth, which were trending on Twitter. People likening his project to propaganda and the Hitler youth in uh, Germany, which obviously indoctrinated children over there. Many also saying that the federal government shouldn't be involved in telling schools what to teach children. Others, other Twitter users like this one in Canada, uh, pointing out that American education is already very patriotic. He says, I have relatives who grew up in the American school system and it's already as flag waving, star-spangled patriotic as it can be. Uh, there, uh, uh, on the other hand, some Americans are welcoming the project. This education correspondent at NPR says that last night a teacher texted me saying parents are repeating Trump's angry rhetoric about indoctrination. Uh, and Republicans are in, ge in general are, are welcoming this and this man saying, I say that uh, the Democrats hate it because it destroys their communist agenda. This historian, though, Joanne Freeman, responded by saying that learning history should involve owning the bad as well as the good in a nation's past. OK, let's move on now to Belarus, where protests, of course, are continuing against last month's re-election of Alexander Lukashenko. Yes, and women protesters there have found a way to stop Lukashenko's policemen from harassing and arresting them. First of all, they deafen them by shouting in their ears, and then they attempt to uh, tear off their masks and balaclavas, uh, as you can see in this video we're about to show you. Uh, and yet, as you can see in those pictures, uh, the three men actually end up fleeing. A uh, French newspaper, Courrier International, says the strat strategy is called name and shame. And a whole movement has organized, organized itself around it. It's they first unmask the men in uniform, then take pictures or videos of them, identify them thanks to facial recognition or internet forums. Uh, and lastly, share their identity on social networks such as Nexta, a telegram channel with more than two million followers. Uh, the Guardian says that on Wednesday evening, Nexta released the names, dates of birth and sometimes license plate numbers of 12 riot police officers that Nexta said had blood on their hands. Uh, Nexta's founder is Stepan Svetlov. He's a Belarusian blogger exiled in Warsaw. He says the aim of the approach isn't to encourage violence or attacks against police officers, but rather to shame them. And finally, Emerald, a website called H. K Leaks has been stepping up its doxing of Hong Kong pro-democracy figures. Tell us more. Yes, uh, they're using this tactic too, but this time it's it's used against protesters. And it's coming from a shady website which is promoted by groups linked to the Communist China uh, Chinese Chinese Communist Party. It's been it's known as doxing. Uh, i.e. publishing personal details including home addresses and telephone numbers uh, alongside descriptions of individuals' alleged crimes. And here they're, they're, they're aiming at Hong Kong pro-democracy activists, such as this uh, young woman who was, has been receiving menacing calls from strangers and being bombarded with messages calling her a cockroach. Uh, this uh, 
this website is set up or registered on a Russian server, which experts say is specifically designed to evade prosecution and uses anonymous hosting and regularly shifts domains. But that, that hasn't stopped calls for to ha the hackers' movement anonymous, asking the collective if it can help get rid of doxing sites like this one for Hong Kong. Okay, Emerald Maxwell with Media Watch. Thank you very much. Thank you.